Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tadaima Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarpanito, and I am joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Cepeda. Irashamase. And Colin Smarley. Hello, everybody. Hope you and yours are doing well. And guys, I I need your help. It's with a heavy heart, mm. but I have to say that on our Discord channel, we have to we have to change <sighs> our role name. Yeah, we can't we can't defend Cowdy anymore. The time has come. This is a crossroads. We My bid heart. you adieu, Cowdy. What the night? <laughs> I mean, oh, fuck almost. you, Kauri. <laughs> F- fuck you. What? What? Fuck you walking what? in there like nonchalantly being like, oh, yeah, by the way, got a got an apartment in London now. A flat. Gonna be Excuse you. A flat. A flat. Whatever. Fucking it's British. Different. Fucking. She, she's Brexiting to London. She tried like, to get an apartment, <laughs> but it couldn't fit in her schedule. Her Did schedule? Her, her schedule. schedule. Did she live in Tokyo before like Terrace House? I can't remember. Yeah, she's, there Japan, about. Yes. she's moving yeah. from like the number three or four most or probably the number one most expensive city to like the number three or four right like hmm. this chick's loaded <laughs> it's my yeah, she's money yeah, yeah right. low yeah i'm just upset that she just so nonchalantly announces that she's leaving like she's like it's not gonna hurt us or anyone in the house but mostly us <sighs> I mean wow. sure yeah you know it's just like that first six in the house we can look at, back at now maybe not the best starter pack to go with in yeah. Paris house so far yeah. and An unideal starter pack and how did she try and draw the parallel like Shohei leaving like had nothing to do with that I just don't buy it I just don't know it seemed like a defense mechanism when she like really was like digging her heels and like nah I didn't care Shohei can leave whatever I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I thought I was a part of the Cowdy Defense Force. <laughs> well, we're hitting on her now. She's gone. Cowdy Attack Force. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she leaves the room, and now it's like, yeah, let's talk mad shit right. about her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This uh, is that the sound of talking shit? Just like it, it is. <laughs> it's very like similar to trying to get gremlins. a cat. That's yeah. what it sounds like in a Peanuts movie. Yeah. yeah. So this week, we're going to talk about episode 19 of Tokyo 2019, 2020, The Stray Sheep, which is based on, I hope is a good pun, but I don't know enough Japanese to know for sure if it's one. Um, as you probably know by now, of course, we're all a little bit miffed that Kaori has announced she's leaving, but we will get to that when we get to it. <laughs> While Jack yeah, that dies. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's just the episode oh, no, no, with no. the panel. <laughs> And the panel, uh, we have Tori Chan who says, "Hey, Show Chan's at a movie. He's doing, he's doing, filming a movie for the next two weeks." Which I know she said we need to carry, we need to fill for him, or we need to carry without him. I feel like that was just being nice. No offense to Show Chan, but <laughs> he like... doesn't do much. <laughs> yeah, I want to start Anyways. keeping a tally of how many times he talks because i swear it's like maybe three or four times in a part like the mm. whole part <laughs> there have been <laughs> some episodes where you brought it up too like i don't think he said anything <laughs> i mean though to be fair baba zona doesn't talk a whole lot either yeah 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 but yeah. at least when she talks it's it's a zinger which yeah, shows yeah, the conversation yeah, yeah. yeah. And, mm. and it really stands out how little shohan talks shochan talks when you have rui hashimura come yes. out and like he's like the star of the oh, show yeah. you know it really like a stark contrast right uh and also uh in this panel segment in the beginning yama mentions he reflects on shohei's time in the house and he says he reflected by watching old episodes and doing research on youtube which i want to propose the fact that there's a chance <gasps> he might have seen us <laughs> Oh we might gosh. be that research. If he just plugged yeah. in Terrace House, he might have. Oh my gosh. Lot, I that think changes we do get a, the game. I do think saying. we get a lot of bounces on YouTube from Japanese people. <laughs> like, oh shit, this is in English. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> yeah, we, we probably do. Do you think do you think Yamachan speaks Ego? I, think he, I, do, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe a little, a little saying, bit sometimes on the show. But you're him? right. There is a chance he saw us and was like, oh shit. Yeah. So I'm just saying we've got to button up our show now, guys. We've got to be professionals uh, because we could be being seen by Yamachan. Well, before I before we turn all professional, I would just like to point out that it's really fun to me that it, English is called ego in Japanese. 
Lego. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lego, my Le- freaking ego waffles, mm-hmm. son. But nice. It's time to put the jokes away now because we're now a serious podcast. It, it, podcast for mm, intellect. Yes, very <gasps> professional. Well, we'll let them think that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so we open this episode in the first floor where Kaori, Haruka, and Emi chan are downstairs and they're noshing on some instant ramen. Which, when I wrote that in my notes, I didn't think it'd become a plot point, but it becomes a major plot point. Mm. The ramen instant. The, mm. the ramen incident. <laughs> the ramen instant. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pepe and Ruka come home. Uh, Pepe is extremely tired because he did a basically double duty of being a model by day and a mangaka by night. Uh, to which he says, I'm going to probably quit modeling in September, which I don't blame him. He seems like a really Mm-mm. busy guy. And on top of that is on Terrace House. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a lot of responsibilities. He's so busy. He's got to hire two people to help him out and he's going to take a pay cut to do it. That's how busy he is. He's willing to take that pay cut. See, I think that's a cool thing though, because when yeah. you're a when you're a mangaka that has assistants, that's Seems kind of official. Yeah, but yeah. it just like shows like, man, I'm I'm I got too much work, guys. Somebody help me, please. Yeah, right. It it's literally insane their schedules. Like I remember seeing like a gr- like a graphical representation of like the day by Masashi Kishimoto, who's the mangaka mm. for Naruto. Mm-hmm. He had like four hours of sleep every night. And then, like, two Ooh. hours per day to, like, eat and bathe and take care of himself. And then on the weekend, he would just, like, he'd get a whole luxurious eight hours to sleep on one day, if you can believe that. But then the rest of that is just work. Six days a oh week. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. Well, and practicing jutsus in the corner. Oh, right. Yeah, his ninjutsu. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, dude was banging out at least a chapter a week for years, like a solid, I don't know, 20 years. I mean, that that's the expectation for serialized manga. Like, mm. even if you're really big, you can't just be like, sorry, guys, I'm taking a break. Well, unless you're the guy who writes Berserk. Then okay. You, then you can yeah, he, say. he said, sorry, guys, take a break. But <laughs> yeah. like yeah. the One Piece manga, like he is he's hospitalized himself because of how hard he's worked. Brutal. Mm-hmm. Well, I Insane. hope Pepe doesn't get to that point. I no. seriously. Same. Uh, and in this scene, Yo comes home and uh, he just came home from practice and he wants to use the uh, playroom to go chill, watch TV, right? Uh, but I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into this, but I kind of want to get your guys' perspective on this. There are these little moments where Pepe is interacting with Yo and it feels a little bit like Pepe is being pretty passive aggressive. It's just it's just like um, competitive, right? Like they're jostling a little bit for position because it's like, hey, who are you? Oh, I didn't recognize you because you looked like a pro basketball player yesterday and mm. now you don't. And it's just like, whoa, a little tension. I definitely felt it. Yeah. Or, yeah, just generally uncomfortable a little bit. Yeah. There was that yeah. one bit where Pepe was like, oh, we should go see him in a game so we can all chant. Oh, he's so hot. And... I got that vibe. Of, yeah, it was I was like, like oh. oh, yeah. He's hoping he had that look on his face, like, yeah. I hope people didn't hear me just say that. Wow. <laughs> it, it made me think, like, you know, like Pepe is one of those guys could be a great friend, but like you wouldn't want to like be on his bad side. I feel like because he would mm. be kind of relentless. Is my thought. Mm. Yeah this this reads to me as like he's he's threatened. He's like used to being the funny, charming, yeah. handsome guy in the house, and now. There's someone who is perhaps equally funny and charming and handsome. And it's like, no, that's my thing. You took my thing. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's it's like it's like people in the house are gravitating towards the O. And he's like, he's like, yeah, people, you know, he's th- stealing my thunder, man. It's like when the, the, <laughs> the new cute guy from another school gets transferred to your high school, you know? Yeah, we all know that anime plot. <laughs> it's yeah, coming exactly. to life right in front <laughs> yes. of Tede's eyes. And he's horrified. He's like. I'm the one that gets swept to the wayside in this situation. And I think that it's still cool, though. I like Rio so far. I mean, we wanted an athletic Olympic hopeful. We got one. We speculated about this way back, you know, when before the season even started. So let's see what happens. You know, I I, and like I said last week, too, I hope we're not forced to pick sides because I like both of them, you Mm -hmm. know, for their in in Mm -hmm. their own unique uh, personalities and offerings yeah 
in the next scene here, we go up to the playroom where Yo's just doing the thing that every millennial does, where they quote watch TV, but really they're just playing on their phone. They're just tweeting and yeah, tweet, tweet, tweet. looking at the Instagrams, you know. Um, but then uh, Emmy comes in and she wants to confirm, you know, hey, are we still on for tomorrow for the baseball game? And uh, she sneaks in a little bit of, uh, do you want to get dinner or tea afterward? Where here, Ryo kind of takes uh, initiative and he's like, oh yeah, I'll find us a place. Don't worry about it. You know, I'll figure it out. Which is a very jockey, you know, masculine thing for him to do. It's very kind of expected based on the archetypes we, we believe with him. Uh, Colin, did you have a thought about him? Yeah, yeah. It's like he's taking point, you know, because he's a point guard. Uh, yes. Uh, Any uh, other uh, have one week without we these puns, you fucks. Uh, no, but no, it, it's <laughs> they're, they're very charming very quickly. This is just like they're not they're not pulling any stops, man. They're like they're just going for it. Mm. I think Emiko is really has it in for you. Is the feeling I get. Yeah, I was surprised with like how flustered she was. Like she was like, "Oh, I need to go find him and talk about tomorrow," and like the way she like kind of like awkwardly like crouched down and she's like, "Wait, can I, can I add you to line?" And it's like, uh. yeah. <laughs> I also, he sent the best sticker as his first line impression. It's just like a character getting hit in the face with a baseball, and it's a don. <laughs> It was pretty really funny. Nice. It was nice. pretty funny. And that's another thing, too. Like, he went to the playroom. Amika came down looking for him. And then Pepe had to be the one to tell her, hey, he's upstairs. Just another, like, you know, thing where, oh, I can tell you're looking for him. Like, Pepe knows that she's into mm. him. And I think it's kind of coming through and shining through in everything she does and says. Like, it's really hard for her to contain her enthusiasm. And, again, there, it's not even 24 hours, I think, or just about 24 hours since they met. So it's still very, very fresh. Yeah, you could say this is maybe the infatuation period for sure. Yeah, mm. um, yeah. but after we see that perfect line message, we cut to the shit tro, uh, and this is the first intro we see actually with uh, the the montage of Rio. Like he's actually in this intro, right? Because mm-hmm, he wasn't mm-hmm. in the last one, if I remember right. 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 Uh, I thought it looked straight up just like a highlight reel of look at all the good basketballs I can do. Like, can we just have your highlight reel we don't want to like have to film extra stuff and it's like yeah. okay yeah we don't have a high shutter speed camera can, can you just give us some of your stuff um and then after the shit show we get to the first floor it's 8 a.m and it's just pepe and it's just yo it's just mm. the two the two men who are Dun-dun. fighting over emika I thought they were going to continue chiding each other because he's like, oh, what are you cooking? And, and Rio was like, oh, something you probably don't eat much of. And I thought it was like a slight, like, <laughs> oh, man, they're just keep elbowing each other. Like, get out of my way, get out of my way, you know. But it was more like they made light of it, like, oh, you're just going to crack eggs like Rocky into your mouth. Mm. And I've never done that before. Has anyone ever just cracked a raw egg straight into their mouth? N- no, I can't say that I have. I'm I too don't scared think Rocky to do did that. either, did he? <laughs> I mean, it's just like a boxer, like, um, wrestler kind of, you know, stereotype that they like do that. He, like, them. I know yeah. that. I think he did drink them. But there was a glass, glass involved, you heathen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no <laughs> one's out here just crunching on <laughs> eggs. There was like, a vessel that, eggs. that carried these <laughs> eggs to his mouth. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, I think, I think they had a little fun there. I think they have this vibe of we can be friends, but the moment we have to compete, well, we have to be, you know, quote unquote on, you know, it's no holds barred. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that's the feeling mm-hmm. I get between the two of them. Fight-o. Wouldn't, wouldn't you make uh, also, I mean, it's very clear that Rio is there for love. He has stated it to his friends. He's there to date, you know, and that's why he brought up the bros before hoes in the first place. Cause he's intending to date all these, as many girls as he can, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's kind of why he brought that up, I think. And mm-hmm. so, uh, Emika did the same thing. She brought up, that's her priority. And that they're gravitating closer to each other, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Parallel to that line of thinking, now that I think about it, maybe Pepe kind of hamstringed himself by just being like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm here to grow and work on my manga. And the fact that he didn't mention romance whatsoever might give some signals to Emika and Ko that are like, oh, he's not really here for that. Mm. yeah maybe yeah but as we find out later i don't think that's swaying emiko away from pepe 
you know, we, we see the way she talks about him in confidence and mm-hmm. yeah, it's pretty striking. That was an, right? That's an interesting combo. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but other moments that happen here with this pepperio uh, d- shindig downstairs in the kitchen, <laughs> uh, Emmy walks in glasses on so she can quote see Rio better. Right, you know, another one of Pepe's jabs. Uh, that was cringy too. Like, it okay. was. So before that, though, the guys, I think they bonded over the shitty, gross, nasty mess of ramen oh. left in the sink and the pile of dishes. Listen, like, am I gonna win any like you know world's cleanest person awards? Probably not. But I try and be tidy. You know, like I try not to be like just leaving shit out everywhere. But those dishes, that mountain dishes was nasty and then to leave the food in at the very least put it down the sink and rinse it out and maybe just let it soak overnight you know like at the at minimum like it takes five seconds it just kind of really grossed me out i don't know what did you guys think about that when you saw that they're that dirty there yeah i think yama's rant after this scene <laughs> during the panel discussion was so unput like the play- <laughs> I didn't realize how gross the place was. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were getting shots of the bathroom in the in the previous episode. We're like, wow, this place is kind of a dump. And uh and then we get shots of the kitchen, mounds of dishes, and then someone says it uh I think Emmy says that it is sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it's even worse than what oh. we see. And then later on in the episode, we get Ruka coming in and telling Rio, hey, I cleaned the bathroom. And then we get a shot oh, of the bathroom. My and it's gosh. dank, dimly lit. The mop is on the floor. Dude, like, the bathroom is such, it looks like something out of Saul. Kind of does. Like, like, compared there's to like a O&D. hand in the yeah. corner. Yeah, just... compared to like O and D, because you've got like it looks like that plastic that's wrapped around toilet paper and empty toilet paper rolls on the ground next to like a uh, what's it called? Uh, essential oils with the sticks sticking out. Incense. Incense. Like, could do the word, but they got that <laughs> on the ground, and then they have the <sighs> net that to clean the pool is sitting there on top of a dirty ass nasty sponge, and then this is after Ruka said he cleaned it, like. Naughty the fuck? It's not. Ugh, it's gross, dude. I was half expecting like rust stains to be on the floor, and somebody in the in the distance asking me if I want to play a game. All right, <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. Bad. Where is Jigsaw? He's just gonna pop out of the water. <laughs> he's the uh, he's a secret seventh member of the house Ugh. next Terror. to next to Shohei's tooth. Terror Anyways. house. <laughs> in, in summary, Shohei's tooth. That was in his summary, trap. the house is gross. <laughs> yeah, it's, is it gross, is y'all. unfortunate though, right? That Yo needs to live like he's a uh, Olympic hopeful. He needs <clears throat> routine in his life. He needs Stability. good breakfast, and by mm-hmm. breakfast I mean like four plates. He had a yeah. lot of food, you know. But nonetheless, <laughs> yeah. he, he has to have a regular schedule to maintain his physique and all that. And instead, he's like, "This weekend, I might need to deep clean this house because it's so fucking filthy that yeah. I just." I'm gonna deep clean it. And if you're mo- if you're a roommate, a new roommate that comes into this house, I mean, this is in any living situation. But if you're a new roommate, especially on Terrace House, and you come in and the house is disgusting, like I would be upset. Like I would be kind of irate. I would be angry. Like, Part of the reason why I really like Taka back in O and D is because when he left, he spent a long time cleaning. He did yard work. He mm. scrubbed down the stove. He scrubbed down the tub. He like left that place better than when he got there. And that's the way yes. it should be, I feel like, you know. And I, I didn't see anyone lift a finger when they left. Shohei just left. Kauri, I love her, but she just I'm assuming she just leaves. I don't know. Maybe maybe she'll prove me wrong. Actually, we haven't actually seen her leave yet. But yeah. you know what I mean? But it's just where is that work ethic? Where is that that drive to li- live tidily? Apparently it hasn't existed in this house. And I Ugh. I wonder, so, you know, Pepe seems like he's been living in a culture of fear since he moved in, right? Because he, when he talked to Rio about it, he was like, I wanted to say something, but I don't have the heart to do it, right? Uh, oh, that's Emmy, true. He did say that. But Emmy, on the other hand, she try, when she comes in and it's just her and Rio downstairs, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's it's this messy. But she kind of tried to distance herself from the from the issue as if she wasn't at fault, right? Even though she, she was part of the problem. Yeah, as Yama points out, we got that shot of her eating ramen with the other two girls <laughs> last night, and it's ramen yeah. in the sink. I'm not, I'm not gonna assume, mm. but I'm just saying. Mm. And, and the I clues can see are there. though, you know, to to play devil's advocate here, I can see though the um, temptation to uh, fall in line, so to speak, to not be mm. the, the. No one wants to be the tall nail, right? Besides Rio, 
he's the only one that wants to say, hey, what's up with this? This is messed up. And it turns out most people are glad he did that. But it's really hard to do, particularly in Japanese culture, to stand out. So I could see, I could even imagine a scenario in myself where I come into a house that's dirty. I'm like, oh, I guess this is just how we be now. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not good. It's not right. It's not healthy, but it's the at easy a, way out, you know? At a towering five foot nine, he's become the tall nail that <laughs> sticks up in this crowd. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm glad he said something. I hope we get like a montage where they all clean house together and bond. We, like, that would be nice. We got a little bit of it. I, w- I was pretty impressed with the progress that we made today in this episode. Yeah. Some little- vacuum cleaning. Just a little bit. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna do it in steps, you know, in installments. Yes. I remember because Enruka just sat there. Enruka <laughs> was just. Also, the carpet looked like it was dirty. Yeah, I it's very nice. much question having carpet in like a dining setting to begin with. So I can't imagine all the little food bits mm. that are on the ground underneath the chairs, like that mm. have just been languishing there for apparent weeks. All the yeah dried up broth awesome. on the carpet, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, love it. I'm going to tell you as someone who lives in an apartment with no uh, proper dining area, so we have to eat out, eat out in the living room where there's carpet. It gets real dirty real quick. You mm-hmm. have to make sure you keep it tidy. At least, uh, uh, once a week is probably what you should do, at least. And if you notice when Haruka is vacuuming, if you look closely, you catch her battery pack for her microphone. Her, like, <gasps> clip-on mic or whatever it is. It's on her back lower back oh. there and so interesting fourth wall. so fourth they're, wall. they're the wearing shatter. microphones yeah love mic huh yeah oh yeah no that, that's yeah that, that's why every pool scene sounds like garbage because you can't fit a lav mic on a bikini so it's all just boom mics or something. I, yeah i wondered if it was like if they had some good booms too you know so i want mm-hmm. it feels like the panel aren't wearing mics but maybe they're just really hiding them well too the panel they're i think they're mics. i think yeah. they're wearing mics you think yeah. they're wearing well, them Love yeah, but they're also Love on a sound them. stage, though, aren't they? Yeah, I thought they just had mm-hmm. booms off camera. I don't know. I mean, that's possible. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, they don't move that much, so right. I don't see why they wouldn't have lobs. You know what I mean? Um, but we've been dwelling too long on the dirty dishes, so let's let's put those away for now. Put them in the dishwasher. God, please clean and them. Let's <laughs> go to Takigashira Hall in Isogo, where we have Yo, and we get to see his little I do work montage, but obviously instead of work it's just him practicing basketball um and we get little bits of information about who he is we know that he's been single for about two years now which is kind of surprising honestly um and that he has played on the national japanese team before and he graduated from dominican down in california so i would say that though he hasn't had a girlfriend that he considers to be a girlfriend in the last two years i'm willing to suspect man's gone on a few dates done a few things Slang a few thing of things, and so well, it's slang you know, a few what? A, you, what? a few what? I'll just yeah. let you fill in the blanks there. But, <laughs> but he's, def- he's definitely been active, you know. <laughs> and we find out about him when he's talking to his friends that he doesn't really have a type either, which is just mm. like open season. Yeah, he, is that another just basketball chill. reference? No, I, it didn't mean for me. I'm just like he'll just like hey whoever. You know, let's let's wait. Let's I'm do confused. This thing. Jack is real a hunter now. I don't really. <laughs> or is he we're talking drafting? about basketball? We're talking about his, a lot of his dating teams. type here. I think that he just um he just you know doesn't have a type. He just open to whoever, older, younger. He mentioned right. Doesn't yeah, matter. that he mentions that in the in the date with Emika, right? Yeah. Which speaking of, let's just go to that right. So after practice, he he sprints to Suidabashi because he's late. Not he's late. To their date to watch people run on baseball plates. I was going to say, thank you. I was going to say he ran because he's late. Dude, date number one. This was like one of the most shocking parts of this whole episode to me. Like you're in Terrace House. You're on camera. You're going on your first date. You know the show. This is a big deal here. And he's late. And then the excuse he gives, ultra lame here. He said, I got too excited so I was late. What does that even mean? And then hold on. And then to be late is one thing. But to get there after the game even starts, that's really late. That's really late. That's maybe yeah. They that's missed maybe part of the an game. hour oh, late. I don't I can't even think of. Like what time did she had to have told him to get there with reasonable time before the game? You know, so I'm guessing it's at least 30 minutes, at least. Oh man. I, I was about to say I wasn't like sure how long she had been waiting 
Um, I mean, she did. She was like, oh, soy, oh, soy. Like, you're late, you're late. But look who's tardy. I, I, I yeah, I, I, I was okay with like the sorry, I got too ex-. like, I thought it was a charming little line. Mm. Like, I don't think that was really why he was late. And I think he, right. he made up for it. I think he made up for it later. He did, but yeah. also keep in mind that they already like lined up. Okay, this is exactly when he gets off four thirty. They're gonna meet at six. Like it was like black and white. So I just think it's it's just not a good look, you know. Conspiracy theory time. Everyone put <gasps> on your tin foil basketball oh, shorts. Oh boy, what? he was late on purpose. So what? Then he fashionably set late. Up. Fashionably dun, dun, late. Dun. Here, there are a lot of reasons. For one, it's baseball. You can be four hours late, and it's still the second inning. Uh, I mean, two, that's not wrong. Yeah, <laughs> see, I, I get you, right? I, I know a thing or two about sports. Uh, two, being late lets him, like, when he pays the bill at the end of the day, right? If he had been on time, you know, the paying the bill would have just been like, oh, let me handle this. I got this, right? And they would have done a little bit of a check dance, right? And that's fine. But for him to be able to use the excuse, no, I was late. This is my late fee. It's kind of a, it's an authoritative, like end of discussion. I paid for this date and it's fine. And mm-hmm. we had fun and let's go on another one. It puts him I, in control of this possible relationship. Mm. And I think that he's that kind of person who likes to be the alpha, who likes to be mm. the one, you know? I get what you're saying, and we'll find out in the future, you know, whether he's that smart. I'm not willing to say he's not he's, he's not smart enough to do that. Maybe. I think it's a bold statement uh, for a conspiracy theory, but it could be possible. But I just, uh, I just, I call me old fashioned, but I just have never been late, especially on a first date. Maybe like 10th or 11th, 12th date, maybe a little like, hey, 15 minutes, sorry, whatever. But like first date, like it just goes against everything I know. But again, I might be just old fashioned. I, I also have another conspiracy theory. Oh. And this might be why I ignored the lateness so much because I was mm. so distracted by the fact that he was wearing glasses mm. and she had on her glasses like in like like on the front of her shirt, mm. like prepared for at any one moment she might need to put on glasses. I totally feel like he wore glasses because he saw her that morning and was like, oh, we can match. And that's Mm. a talking point. So he went on a solo glasses picking date for his date. Mm. Colin, you've been quiet. What are you thinking, man? (laughs) So, well, my, my, actually, I'm surprised. That's so funny that we have all different conspiracy theories. So my conspiracy theory is. I'll make one up. (laughs) You're going to make one up. Uh, my conspiracy theory is that he was late on purpose to see how she would react to him being late, and then he was never going to be late again. <laughs> you think after he's that, that okay, fucking no, arrogant and narcissistic? That is brutal. I don't buy that one. <laughs> cool. I, th- th- this I is my like true. probably the most out there out of, the, of out of the three of us. But the, I think <laughs> that because he's just seen to, if he if she likes him enough to not care that he's late i kind of get that too because here's the thing when you're late for stuff it is arrogant by nature it is is. somewhat Mm, narcissistic mm. to be late for anything so that has to be part of it right colin is this a very common first date move for you oh Oh. what (laughs) what yeah, what? like I think you need to be arrogant to even consider that a possibility. I feel like you, you Robert, are giving me way too much credit. <laughs> Y'all, I think really he was just being a basket boy, yeah. and coach didn't let him go shower for a significant mm. amount of time, and he had to make it back from Yokohama. That, yeah. yeah, that's he, probably he, the most he obvious answer. He did say he does have to put in more work. He has a lot of you know. Um, progress to make if he's going to be on the olympic team mm-hmm. yeah and stay there and it's also very obvious he likes to talk to like he it, th- that scene where he was talking to his teammates it sounded it sounded like it was it was a pretty long conversation so he could have gotten caught up lost track of time it could have been a million things and they're online yeah. together so i would like to hope at least that she wasn't shocked that he was gonna be late you know i would like to think they mm-hmm. were maybe keeping in contact and she just wasn't left hanging high and dry you know Right. I mean, at the end of the day, this might fit into his athletic persona, you know, like, oh, he's an athlete. He loses track of time a little. You know, what a scamp. Like, yeah. at least he has six packs. <laughs> to, um, to kind of fast forward here, <laughs> but, too, in the in yeah. the show, um, 
they don't show any of the game, which I was kind of disappointed in. They just show the outside of the stadium and then of Tokyo Dome and then inside. And it's like, oh, man, I wanted to see some some baseball and, you know, and hear some of the organ playing. And I don't know. I was looking forward to it. Like kind of when you go to see Subasa play hockey, I was looking forward to some cool action. But it wasn't meant to be because licensing issues. They go yeah, to the yeah, restaurant. So they go and get lamb. And it was cool. They had a good vibe there together. It's a little nervous energy because they're still getting to know each other. But I mm-hmm. thought it was a pretty successful date overall. Yeah, they go to uh, Jingis Khan Kirishima, right? Where they get some uh, some lamb, some mutton. And this is mm. where the infamous pun takes place from Emika, mm-hmm. right? Where <laughs> she's basically saying that she's a stray sheep. She uh, is a little lost, needs someone to snap her out of her funk, right? And I, I assume one of those words can sound a little bit like sheep, which is why she says straight sheep. Uh, but here you get this moment where Rio's like, oh, don't worry. I got you. I can be your coach. I can snap you out of your funk. Mm. Mm. Damn. Be my slide, coach. Slide, slide, slide right in there. Slide right into home plate. <laughs> huh, my baseball. Sem- my senpai. <laughs> um, we also learn that, and this is kind of surprising to me, that Emika has very high opinions of Pepe. I was yes. getting more friend vibes True. at that um, beach date, like I stated last week. But I think that she thinks of him as a man. She thinks he's attractive. She thinks he's you know uh, fun to be with, good energy, looks good all the time. Like all the wow, time. yeah. I I do think she's more into um, Rio though, uh, and maybe it's just a recency thing because he's the new new boy. But mm. I think there is kind of a primal attraction going on here. This is the kind of energy I like seeing. On a first date, there's definitely some some attraction going on physically. Mm, yeah, good vibes. I liked that they were like having conversation. There was none of those weird, awkward pauses that we've unfortunately become used to with like Ruka dates. Yeah, like it was it was a good time. It was a good time. Food looked mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. It was oh, a I good was example of like a just a. A good date, I guess. I would, it, I'm i short of words here of what to say yeah. here, but we've just seen a lot of inept dates, you know, and just a lot of people mm-hmm. just having fun or just whatever with Kenny or whatever with Shohei, and it doesn't really go anywhere. This was something that is definitely progressing, and he was smooth in the way that he said, excuse, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom, paid for it, like you said, Daily. You know, that was a good move yes. and a mature move. You and uh, Tori Chan were putting out, like, he's got a maturity about him, and they're right. Yeah, and I, I think that was the big bullet point that this date had over the Pepe date. Uh, was the whole like smooth move with the check? Otherwise, I feel like they were kind of neck and neck with Emmy. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel I feel like both dates went pretty damn well. You know? Yeah. yeah at the time, I mean, at the time at last week, I didn't think Emmy and Pepe were is a good date, but now the hearing her talk about it, it's changed my mind. So I do think it is closer than I originally thought. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of see them as neck and neck right now, right? Because you know this date went well with Yo, but twice in this episode. Emika says, oh, Pepe's so cool. He's so hot all the time. Mm. You know, she says it once to Rio and once to just her friends who have nothing to do with Terrace House, right? So that's, yeah. that's to me, puts Pepe in a pretty good light for her. Very telling. But at the same time, she uh, says she's also very attracted to the athletic type, which I like Pepe. But put him next to Rio and he is not no. the athletic type. <laughs> no. No. He, he sits in his special chair while mm-hmm. drawing manga all day. That can't be good for his back long term, I gotta say. <laughs> no. I can see this being that classic battle between wits and charm and charisma versus mm. just abs. <laughs> just Which abs. Oh. Holds up against all that all by itself, by the way. It really does. Okay, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people don't like hearing that, but abs are a factor. Okay, so I, I mean, really think that I really think that I, I at least I'm hoping that it doesn't turn into that, but I can see this converging here with this episode. Well, we happen to have a female on our show, Jack. So <laughs> yep, let's just shoulder all of womanhood. On oh, one. yes, yes, yep. all for all women. Daily, daily, yes, please on. speak for all women. Daily, speak for all Japanese women, please. <laughs> Thank you. IDK. Um, no, but I, I was just gonna say like. Give give Rio a little more credit than that. I think he has more no. than just abs. True, I think true. that he is very charming and kind of a smooth talker. Obviously, on the date, he you know was was very. He said he was talkative, mm. and I think he was able to communicate himself very clearly and in a in a positive way. Like they they had a, they had some good combos. 
I agree. I think yeah. that also definitely applies to Pepe. I mean, he's super fun. Like when he's like, wait, who are you? Oh, you look like a professional basketball player. Like that was great. He's very mm. clever. But yeah. almost, I, th- I think it's more the factor of like, I think it's going to come down to approachability versus abs. It's like Ab- Pepe's like. Abpro- yeah, that. Abroachability. <laughs> um, like, like Pepe's like. He's too cool. He's a model and a mangaka. He's got so much going on for him. He's he's just like on this next level. And so is Rio. I mean, he's he's, you know, aiming for the Olympics, but personality wise, I feel like he's very approachable. Has mm-hmm. Emmy I can't remember, remind me guys, has Emmy read his manga yet, Mingo? Uh, I don't think. It wasn't it mentioned this Wait. episode? Somebody was talking about no. his manga. Yeah, was okay. it, everyone it has read it except for Haruka and Yo, and we find okay. Haruka reading it later. Okay, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll, get there. we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, before we leave uh, the uh, Jingasukan Kirishima date, uh, I just wanted to point out a small thing. So when they were eating at the table, did you guys notice like the light that was like overhanging over the grill? Was mm-hmm. that... Yeah. Supposed yeah. to was that from the because of the restaurant was that supposed to be there was that a production thing? If I had to guess, it was part of the restaurant. I have to go oh, back. I don't and know. Look, man. It Sorry. just seemed What's really oddly point, placed. It was odd. Looking. It was just yeah. It was just oddly placed. I thought it was like I, is that just like a piece of the like the is that for the camera? Like are they trying to just get like vanity shots of the food? Because also, of that? yeah. One other thing, like it's really funny because they show an establishing shot. They show okay. There's a cat on Daly's head right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally a big orange Garfield looking cat all sitting Nickel. on Daily's head. It is Garfield. Um okay, I, I lost Garfield. my train of thought. Okay, let me grab it. And there it is. Okay, so it's funny because they show the establishing shot of the restaurant and then Amica goes, It's packed. Okay, that's what they say. And you can oh, hear the true. hustle and bustle. And then they show them in there and it looks empty as shit. Like they have a special like private table and just like one or two servers are walking by. It's like, oh, I thought you were going to say like the producers came and they're like, okay, everybody out. Yeah. <laughs> everybody out. <laughs> like, the, like they're Yakuza or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a restaurant after, after a baseball game, like right next to the it's stadium. It's going to be slammed. Yeah. yeah so it's it's just like, well, it didn't look slammed is all I'm saying. It's but like he did get a reservation, which is smart. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did. Yes, remember yeah. he. This Emmy is a great woman for him because he didn't just reserve any old mutton restaurant. He reserved the finest in Tokyo for the finest of women. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, well, that's that's the he said it's one of the best, the best. In, in Tokyo. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, yeah. Okay. But so, I effort. mean, obviously, you know, you could just say that on a date, but he still wants to put about this air of like, I care enough about you. I want to put my best foot forward, even though I was late. I was going to say, you know what else shows you care? Being on fucking time. <laughs> Again, a conspiracy. The give, lateness was part of his Give it a try. It works sometimes. <laughs> All right, y'all. Just I be late can... to your next first date. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, Ryo and Emmy come home from their date. We go to the playroom where I've learned that Pepe is the worst older brother because he's teaching Ruka how to play Smash on okay. the Switch. But if you'll notice, he gave Ruka only one Joy-Con. And he had two. <laughs> Bitch, I know there's another one in there. <laughs> You're, You're using me. two. I didn't notice that. You don't just buy one loose Joy-Con. There's a fourth one sitting somewhere <laughs> and, in that room. Dude, that is fucked up. And you get the sense that this is probably the first time Ruka's ever played. Oh, yeah. And this is just another, like, more evidence in the fire that Pepe is just sunning Ruka at any point. You know, when he's like, oh, you like <laughs> you like uh, Emmy, right? Remember that last week? Like, mm, he's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's right. Just like. Boom roasted. Just whatever. He's, yeah, you're just like, damn, Pepe, be nice. Here, I'm gonna use the first guy. party controller. You can have the shitty Mad Cats controller that's missing. <laughs> right. Oh my god, yeah, that's we've all exactly been there. With like a we've sticky turbo there. button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they're playing Smash. Rio comes in and he'll he's like, okay, cool, I'll tag in after I take a shower, right? And then we cut to the girls' side, the 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 house we're in the girls' room. Emmy says, Oh hey, I had fun on the date, generally positive vibes. When we come back to the playroom, the boys are talking about the Emmy date, and Rio kind of agrees. He was like, yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. I like how easygoing Emika is, and I like how talkative she is, and Pepe seems to agree. You know, he's he's now in privacy. He's like, be real with me. You know, are you, are you into her? Do you think she was fun? So I, I still think it's maybe just in public when they're both competing in front of Emika, he punches harder. But in privacy, mm. he likes to kind of be a 
a bro before a hoe, you know? Mm. Yeah, you don't have that that pressure. You don't have that pressure on you and, and being in front of the woman that you like because if you're in that inner presence, you have to impress her because that's just dumb heterosexual male brain for you. Yep. Dumb male brain, really, for the most yeah. part. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Y'all are dumb. No. Thanks. Yeah. Definitely uh, very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the next scene here, we're on the first floor. This is the scene where Haruka is vacuuming as Ruka does absolutely literally nothing. Um, and then we get <laughs> he's supervising. All right, <laughs> yeah, he's oh, yeah. watching over. <laughs> yes, you know he's the watcher, like Kauri. <laughs> yes, uh, we get a shot of the blackboard where we see Yo is having dinner with his family, and I assume Pepe drew that iconic shot of Goku after he turns Super Saiyan and looks at Frieza like he's about to tear an asshole open. Like, I don't know why he drew it. No, it, it was his explanation for like, what What are you doing? What? What's your availability, Pepe? It literally said, manga ga, which means it's like, but the, but the manga. Like, the manga is on the mind. Like, he's so angry that's he goes his, Super that's Saiyan. That's his battle right now is with, with the manga. It's a struggle. Interesting. That's cute. Um, well, Emmy comes downstairs and now it's just Emmy, Haruka, and Ruka, right? Uh, and Haruka says something along the lines of how she and Kaori were thinking we should clean the house now that Ryo's here. Mm -hmm. And Emmy's a little bit like, oh, why wouldn't, why didn't you guys clean the house when I was coming here? Yeah. And, <laughs> and Haruka just says, you know, Ryo seems to be a little more particular about it. Vocal. Yes, very. You know? Yeah. Very vocal. This is a lesson out there, you know, it's like the closed mouth doesn't get fed. If you, something's bothering you, speak up, you know, or else you're the only one that's going to suffer, honestly, I think. I'm a firm believer in that. If something's bothering you in roommates or marriage or love or working like that, if you just let it fester inside, you're the only one suffering. No one even mm. knows, you know, so it's, it's better true. just to speak your mind, be honest, open about things and air it out. Rip the band -aid. Yeah, That's life lessons with Tadaima. That's what I think. Uh, and... In this scene, we also see Haruka. She's talking about. Actually, no, let's not skip over Har Ruka's fumble. He has very few fumbles this week, but we need to highlight them on this week's episode of the darndest thing Ruka says and does, where <laughs> he forgot to move his laundry. And then Spider Man walks over the couch to do his laundry. Damn it. Damn yeah, it, Robert. Dude. That was the one thing. That was the one <laughs> Spider Man thing we have seen out of Ruka. I was dude. like, it's like totally unimpressive. It's just walking across the couch. But I was like, I He's was like ready to see some, like a backflip at the end, like flip off the couch. I He's was like, it's balance. starting, it's beginning. He's going to like kick flip off the wall, but then he can't get off because like the stickiness is starting. Like I'm ready to believe. I'm starting. ready to believe. Oh. So the funny part about too, when he comes back, he doesn't even ever, they never show a frame of him sitting back on the couch. He just walks in front of the camera in front around the table, walks in front of Emika and then just stands on the couch. <laughs> like I'm sure he sits down afterwards, but the camera doesn't show it. Like the last room is him just standing like, like, dude, who walks on the couch? Like little kids do that. And Ruka. Do you guys walk on your couches at home? Do you guys walk on your couches at home? Tell the truth. No. No. no only right? no, when I'm like putting something up on a wall behind the couch and I need, because I'm a short man, as I've said before, I need the couch to reach higher. I can see but that. I've done that before. Yeah. If you're putting something, yeah. yeah, for leverage, but not like, oh shit, the laundry. Let me walk clear across my couch. <laughs> man, you a perfectly you think good I can... floor right there. Big boy as I am, you think I can stand in my fucking Ikea furniture? <laughs> yes. It's like, is the floor lava? Shit. Like, what is going on here? Yes. It is Faruka, right? Yes. Um, but I, I don't know. Speaking of childish things, right? Uh, no, this is mean. I mean, it's not that childish. But Haruka also mentions that for her date with Pepe tomorrow, she wants to do Pokemon Go. Dude, I'm And she asks Pepe when he comes home, like, hey, you want to do Pokemon Go tomorrow? Which, that'd be a cool date. Yeah, that'd be fun, right? I'd like it. Um, mm -hmm. And so... Here, here's a thing I didn't want to notice, but then I did. Uh, we cut to the next day, or whenever their date is. We're in Nakamaguro in Tokyo, and the subtitles or the 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 little text at the bottom right says it's 4:30 p.m. in the mm -hmm. afternoon. Would we all agree that 4:30 p.m. is about afternoonish time? Yes. Late afternoon. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Late. The latest. Haruka walks into frame and says "Ohio Pepe," and I was like, "Wait a minute." Wait a minute. Hold on. Good morning. She just woke That's up. Good Give morning. her a break. That is good morning. Hold <laughs> she on. She probably just woke up. She doesn't work. 
<laughs> okay, that's true. But it made me think, is there maybe like a continuity thing? Like, is it, was this shot in the morning and the editors want us to think it's 4.30? Uh, hmm, I wonder. I don't think it was, I hope at least, it wasn't the actual morning because did y'all, you, they were drinking. They were drinking mm-hmm. IPAs. That's what mm-hmm. that was. Yeah. They were trading back and forth and having mm-hmm. indirect kisses. Ooh. Also, an- yes, let's talk about that. So also another life lesson from Dodaima. Never prescribe malice that which can be described by stupidity. So maybe it was what? a mistake, right, where they labeled it 430. Maybe they weren't just trying to, like, deceive us. You know what I mean? Maybe it was mm. the morning and they were just like, oh, that's an editing error. Right. Maybe we they have, have made, an inside joke. We have to consider that a possibility. But there was, to the more interesting point here, an indirect kiss here. And I could see that when they handed each other's drink, Haruka looked at Pepe was like, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Okay, I'll do it too. Like, mm. it was very nice. I was like, oh, oh. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. The gears are turning. Yeah. I, uh, I was, so I think, first of all, they said Ohio. I mean, could it be one of those things where you say it ironically? It's like, yeah, like, I'm just, I'm just sleepy or whatever. It's like, oh, hey, good morning. Just saying that ironically, even though it's definitely the wrong type of time of day. Like Good day. conspiracy theory, they were oh, just yeah. talking about the state, Ohio, Pepe. <laughs> Have you been the next to time Ohio, we Pepe? See them, <laughs> the state. They're gonna be like, "Yo, Alaska, Kentucky." Uh, yeah. There's so many conspiracy theories swirling around this episode. It's hard for me to keep <laughs> yeah. track of all of them. Seriously, <laughs> conspiracy, <laughs> conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory. Yeah, but also. I thought it was like heavily frowned upon to drink in public in Japan. Like I know it's legal. Drink and walk but... and stuff. Like I thought. Yeah, I don't know. I thought. Yeah, because I thought. Daily, do you know anything about that? I, I, pretty... I do not actually. Yeah, because I knew it was legal, but I thought it was heavily frowned upon. So not a lot of people did it. At least I don't they know. say this in tourist uh, tourism videos on YouTube. That's where I get my information. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Same. Same. Yeah. Well, just another thing to add to the conspiracy theory, right, is that Pepe then asked you want to grab lunch later. So if it really is 4.30, they're having a really fucking late lunch. Huh. But then if they're having lunch Whoa. later, they're having a really fucking early IPA. Like I said, I so think... really... I, I think it was just probably a mistake. I think they just yeah. put 4.30 and it was not 4.30. You know, it was probably right. 11-ish or something. But they're just yeah, early drinkers. You know, I think Which that's you more think likely. They're... But you think they would catch it when they re-edited the episode for... Uh... Nah, international. Nah, nah they anyway. don't give a shit about us. Yeah. That is clear with their music <laughs> yeah. choices, oh, right? Ouch. Yeah, yeah. They, they hate us. We we're, um, were swill to them. The only other small detail I want to point out in this uh, in this moment is, you know, they Haruka catches a Squirtle, uh, Pepe catches a Piplup. You know, water mm-hmm. Pokemon represent, water starter represent. But mm-hmm. Haruka's phone is in Japanese, but Pepe's phone, at least Pokemon Go, is purely in English from the looks of it. Oh, it's not in Italian. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I was curious about, right? I mean, it could have been Italian, maybe. I only got a, call, a small glimpse, but at the very least, it's not in Japanese. This is a theme, too, because Pepe's like, hey, I'm here to change the way you feel about Italians, girl. Mm. Let's go get mm-hmm. some Italian to eat. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like, and he's okay. like, we don't actually speak Italian, we speak English. <laughs> yeah, we, they they go to what's it? Tartoria Quattro Ragazzi, a very, very... What Italian a name. name four right? little the, the four dudes. boys. The four young boys. The four ones. young boys. Yes. Okay. Um, but before we get there, we go to Hiki Cafe, right, in Shibuya, where this is where Emmy talks with her friends, right? Mm. And this isn't just, oh, Pepe's so hot, but it's like, look at these pictures of this really hot guy I live with, you know? <laughs> Does he like, also play the, the flute? Uh, yeah. <laughs> because he was, he was like, he had a flute. It was, was that, very posed. Was that jazz flute? I looked too quickly, so I don't know if it was clarinet or what, but it was some kind of flute-like device. I don't, Looks like a recorder. A recorder. Me. I don't know. Jeth- yeah, all those things. <laughs> maybe he's alter ego is Jethro Tull. Um, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe he's yeah, maybe he's the anchor man playing jazz flute. But <laughs> I just wow. I can't. I wish we'll never get this. Maybe on another terrace. We can only hope. But I would love to see Rio's reaction to that scene and this episode mm. when he sees Emmy acting like that. To her friends, show breaking out the cell phone. Look how hot he is. Da 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 da. Oh, he's exactly your type. He that's what her friends say. He's older, but he's still fun to be around. Powerful scene there for yeah. For, it's, uh, it's gonna go. Pepe. It's gonna go one of two ways though. So because you, you don't know when or where everybody's gonna end up by the time he's gonna see that. Because that's gonna be a while from then, like a yeah. long time. Yeah. It yep. so. might not even be till part three. <sighs> I think that he sees it. Guys, oh. this just reminded me. Can I go on a hard tangent real quick? One hard tangent. One yeah. hard tangent this week. Okay, <laughs> so one. 
I should have opposed I, to a soft one. I should have brought this up last week, but back to Shohei leaving all of a sudden and just blindsiding everyone by that. Mathematically, doesn't this happen shortly after his porn scene airs in Japan? And you gotta wonder if maybe some of the feedback he was getting from that had some motivation in him just dropping everything and getting the fuck out of Dodge. My conspiracy theory, since we're all throwing him into the fire this (laughs) week, that's mine. (laughs) Whoa! Like, holy shit, dude. Whoa. Holy, I think that helps explain it to me. Yeah, because if you if you think if you math it out, the softcore porn scene was episode eleven, right? Yep. Which means they would have seen it around episode sixteen or seventeen. That's what I'm saying. So dude. a week or two before he left, Shohei leaves. Just the timing lines up to me. Bruh. This is my story. This is my truth, dude. So yeah, you think he's just he's embarrassed? He, I think he's like, oh fuck. I I think he might have just gotten um a reaction that he just didn't like couldn't handle maybe wasn't what he wasn't expecting and he's like mm. fuck this i'm out i mean he left in the rain holding his golf club yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> he's like i'm fucking out of here fuck this that that's my yes, that's my truth but at the same time like he's doing the films it's not like no one can see them no i know I mean, I, if people seek them out i know but not the fuji tv audience isn't I, maybe right. usually watching a pink film I mean, you're right, but right. like, who who is seeing it on Fuji TV that he doesn't want to see that don't know about it otherwise? Eden Kai you know, told us parents? that it aired. Is he not telling his parents. Eden Kai told what? us it aired in Japan. Yeah, as we saw it, that's what he said. I mean, to us. you're right on this very show. That's friend true. of the show. Friend yeah. of the show. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Yusuke. Yeah, that's that so one. That was a very hard tangent. Yes, it was. <laughs> Sorry, two, I just thought of it. Yeah, too. That's a, that's a wild thought. And it makes me wonder if there are any another terrorist clips where we see their reactions to. Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd, I'd love it. Maybe that, we'll find out. Stay one. tuned, boys and girls. <laughs> that scene proved uh, Terrace House gold, especially for our show, by the way. We reacted mm. to it live as well. So let's hunt that one down if you haven't seen it yet, because that's one of our more popular YouTube videos. So Hell yeah. Self plug. Uh, <laughs> so we go back to the Italian food place, Tartoria Quattro Ragazzi. And... Uh, Pepe, you know, he's mentioning, hey, yeah, I'm doing two, four pages a day just so I can have my evenings free, which is insane <laughs> to me. Like, that that's bonkers, right? So, so six pages to, a day is what he's up to, To me, to, right? that's reason enough not four. to do that job. If you're just going to die drawing, I don't know. I guess you love it. You love it's it. It's passion. Yeah, it's the passion. Yeah, passion. I guess. Like, I mean, look at the game devs, right? Game <sighs> devs get crunched all the time, but it's not like they wouldn't do it, you know? Like, it's, it's what they, well... Crunch isn't what they want, but Ooh, nobody you, wants you put up with but it for the love, it of, the anyway. game. Yeah, the love guess, of the game. I guess where I'm at, I mean, God bless them for people out there willing to do that shit. I guess I'm just at the point in my life where work-life balance is more important. So I'm glad those mm. people are on the grind, but they can't do it for their whole lives, hopefully. Well, that, hopefully. I mean, that's why most people in the games industry burn out by the time they're mid-30s, early 40s. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but also in this moment, Haruka says, hey, I'm so glad that you joined the house because... Literally no one else in the house knows what a squirtle is, but you do, and that's cool. Uh, also, you should come see my next drag race this weekend. And he's excited. Daily, you have a thought? I've been wanting to see more of like her drag racing, A, because we got to see it like the one time. I feel like we had mm-hmm. so much like Haruka car time and then none as soon as mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. Like as soon as she dropped interest in Ruka. Question mark? It so, just petered yeah. out. I think but, um, it's so. Oh, sorry. Good. But she she was like kind of giving herself away there. She was like at the beginning, like when they sat down, they're like face to face, and she's like, "Oh, it's like a really nice atmosphere." And then she like, and he was like, "What?" And like she like actually like had to blush and be like, "Oh no, nothing. I think I guess I'm just excited. <laughs> we never like went out together one on one before." It's like, dang, girl, signal harder, why don't you? (laughs) Yeah. I have a couple theories about that. Now that she kind of revealed where her, where that drag strip is, where that track is, it's pretty far. So I'm wondering if, like, the Terrace House producers are like, okay, we got our footage. We don't need to venture out there again. You know, it's kind of expensive on a Saturday to do that. So maybe that's why. The sad part Mm -hmm. here is seeing Pepe getting pepped up 
when she invites him. Huh. He gets excited about it. And you got to wonder if he's like, well, I really want to go to that. So I'm going to work extra hard now this week so that I can make cool. sure I am available to go because I'm so looking forward to that. You could say he kicks it into second gear so he can finish his work faster. <sighs> but then Hanukkah later pumps the brakes on him. <laughs> Thank you. Snaps Thank for your pumps. You. Ah, I'll be here all night. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> but, so as, as that scene goes, yes, they have plans. Let's hang out Saturday. You can watch me drag race. That'll be fun. He's excited. And then we cut to Suidobashi, right? Uh, where we get to see Yo in it, at the, the B League tip off conference. Mm -hmm. And if you're a long time listener, you probably know I am I'm not the, the biggest sports person really at all. We've established this. This is canon. yeah. And I think it speaks to me so hard that I glazed over this. Like I've watched it three times and every time I'm just kind of like, yikes. Ugh. <laughs> like <laughs> basketball's happening. I uh, guess that, that's not basketball. That's like well, media like, stuff. It was boring yeah. for me too. Don't look at me yeah. like I found anything interesting in that scene. <laughs> it's like, this is boring, <laughs> but he was well-spoken. I guess it demonstrated he has media skills and he was yes. like representing mm. his entire team. Mm. That's the main takeaways there. I think. Are we just going to ignore the fact that the dude on the left when they were doing the conference looked like he was like 50? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. yeah. That dude looked like he should have been retired 15 years ago. <laughs> I got to rewatch. I didn't catch the guy in the green, very, you mean? He was a very wrinkled man. I got to yeah. rewatch this now. Yes. I didn't I missed that. He's a very There's a wrinkled screenshot man. Of, yeah. Look out for that on, on oh, Twitter Lord. In, in the future, y'all, because <laughs> I have some comments about this very wrinkled basketball player. Let's Yeah, not... he's, what, the, the team from Hokkaido, was it? Hey, guys, applaud this man, all right? He's... he's struggling here. He's playing a young <laughs> yeah. man's game. He's, yeah. Next to all I... these, like, fresh-faced boys in their, like, early 20s. Well, let's not yeah, put I mean, like, kudos down. to him, but it's like, holy shit. You're let's sure he was raise a player? Him up. He's a hero. Yeah, come on, guys. Be yeah. Unless he just got a couple really bad fights and his face just ended up that way. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Gosh, yeah, all right. Amazing. You guys are just getting yeah. worse and worse now. That's okay. Mean. I know. That was really mean. We're getting, we're getting dark with Colin again. So. <laughs> I'm losing my empathy, guys. I need Hello, help. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Hi, Colin. And that's the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good, goodbye. Yeah. Oh, Windows um, XP shut down noise. And then we come back to the girls' room, right, where it's Kaudi and Haruka, and this is the first time they've, I guess, talked with each other in a while, right? Like, just one-on-one. -on -one. And Haruka asks Kaudi, so how are you feeling since Shohei left? And Kaudi says, eh, I mean, initially a little bit lonely, but now I think I'm over it. Which, I think is fair. It's been about a week, and he kind of left very suddenly, like, ripping a Band-Aid off, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, That's the Meanwhile, Kaudi... Hmm? I'm sorry. I was just saying that's the thing about her is like it's always been with Kyrie. I, I'm on the defense force, okay, but she will be. she will self admit. You know, she'll be the first to admit that she says things just to make people happy and just to keep things smooth. Mm -hmm. And like this is another mm -hmm. case where I understand Shoei's pain point here, where you can't really take her for at her word straight up because I don't know if she's being straight up with Haruka here or she just wants to keep the peace in the room because she just says <laughs> the thing that keeps the peace all the time. So I don't even know if she feels this way. It's frustrating. Mm. But I will miss her. She was a very nice woman. She's a good drawer. She used markers. She's cool. Statements. <laughs> Statements. She breathed. She, she had breathed. short hair. She wore t-shirts a lot. She had a dog. She has a dog named Alan. Alan. <laughs> Alan. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kaudi then turns the questioning back on to Haruka, right, where she asks, how do you feel about the new people in the house? Haruka very obviously really likes the new people in the house, mainly the one new Pepe in the house. Mm. But Kaudi reveals, maybe this is the first time she's ever said something so candidly on the show, but she said that she was initially intimidated by Pepe, didn't want to hang, mm. didn't want to hang out with him, they couldn't look at his face at first. She there. didn't want to work downstairs anymore, but then whenever he did, she was always like, oh, look at that. So and so show drawing. off. That show off. Man, this totally shows. Like, I I hate to say it because she shouldn't be, but she's so insecure. She's mm. so insecure about Very. her own drawing talents, and Very. it's like, no, girl, you're fine. You're making it, but she's got that imposter syndrome, hardcore, that she feels like she hasn't earned her place. And so, seeing other people do art or creative pursuits is like 
you know, you, c- comparison is the thief of joy, to quote Theodore Roosevelt. Whoa. It, it, she, she's constantly comparing herself to others. And for that to be like inside the house, like another artist there, of course, that's going to like great on her. And I don't know, like, what is what he what he is doing is very official. OK, but is it any more official than what she's doing with her work? Like, they're both successful. Like, yeah, you I mean, know. she's traveling a lot, as you'll see on her Instagram. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, just, she's she's going places quite literally with her drawing. I was surprised to hear this. This surprised me with her. I, the, she's always gotten along great with everyone. And it's been cool. And she bonded with Kenny on their drawing. I thought that might have been a thing. But here we are. At least she, at, you know what? I believe her when she says these things. I think she's being honest. I don't think she's, you know, doing the doing the thing where she just says the stuff. <laughs> but ultimately, she did say that she thinks that he's he's been a positive influence on her in mm-hmm. the house. Yeah, like convincing her to like probably like work more. I guess like I don't think we've seen her work a lot more, but mm-hmm. that might be due to that like. She feels intimidated to just go down and sit at the table and work yeah. side by side with him. And being a positive influence can mean a lot of things. I don't really take that as her saying, oh, we're friends and now we're really cool. I just take that as like, well, I took the insecurity I feel from him doing that and made myself better as a result. Is kind of how I read that. See, I read it. Here we are again, sound our different theories, right? I read it as he's a positive influence on me because now I have a reason to get the fuck out of this house and mm. kick my life into high gear. I mean, definitely. It was, I think Shohei had had to have some influence. I mean, maybe minuscule influence, but had to have some influence on her timing for leaving. I think mm. if Shohei was still here, I don't know if she would have left quite so suddenly, quite so quickly. But yeah, I agree with that too. Pepe is helping nudge, nudge, nudge her out the door. Yep. Yeah, I definitely subscribe to the idea that Shohei is a a pretty big fat reason why it, she left when fat. she did. What? He's not fat. Rude. <laughs> Rude. No, no Shohei, guys, you know I love you. Guys, not fat. guys, Ruka and Haruka are the last two of the original six starter pack. I never would have guessed in the end that they. I thought Ruka might have been no. the first gone, and then when the girl uh-uh. fight happened, I did not think Haruka was long for this world. But here they are. They're still standing. <laughs> Wait, you thought she was going to die? Long, don't take me too literally. Like, long for this Terrace House world. Yeah, absolutely. Outside and of Terrace House is death. <laughs> that is true. That is fact. I, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe Cody, like, just like Shohei, needs to get out of the house just like, you know, just to get out of her comfort zone. Just to grow. Spread her because, wings. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. Because we we were just, we were getting so close. We were getting somewhere. Like, Cody just started opening up, was confessing that she felt insecure, was doing something about it, felt reaffirmed. She st- started thinking about art school. Like, she was doing all these things. And then it's like, just when it started to pick up a little bit, now she's leaving. Okay, we got to mm-hmm. talk. We will talk yeah. about, like, her, this official, like, announcement when she's leaving. But there's a little bit before that, too. Yes. Let's. Yeah. So as, as she's saying, hey, yeah, I, I kind of hate sometimes seeing Pepe show off when he's working in the first floor. We cut to a shot of Pepe working on the first floor. Because uh, <laughs> that's how we do. And, yeah, and it's it's very good comedic timing. And then Haruka enters, and uh, this is where she says, hey, can I like can I read your manga? And she reads it. And this is just a just boom, 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 series of unfortunate things to do when you're into someone and you want to leave a good impression, right? Don't look at me when I'm reading your manga right in front of you at this table. Don't dare look at me react. Yeah, let me encroach on your space, (laughs) read your work, and force you to not look at me, and I won't give you any feedback. And you gotta imagine with that (gasps) pile of papers in her hand, it probably took her some time, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes at least, to read what she had, and then she just kind of puts it down and said, I finished, okay, good night. (laughs) Good. I think it was cute. Like, like <clears throat> don't, don't look at me while I'm reading. Like, I think that mm-hmm. was fine. But the fact that I was just like, wait, did, did is there is this an editing error? Like, is there something missing here? Because she just sits it down and then is like, oh, by the way, let's change subject entirely. It's like usually yeah. you, if you look at someone's work, you're like, oh, I liked this or that was neat or. Like, even something super blasé, it's like, wow, you're really a mangaka. It's cool to see it, like, printed out or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. something, anything, please. Yeah. Like, put yourself in her shoes a little bit. Like, imagine, you know, you're 
someone's uh, listening to the podcast on their headphones, like sitting next to it for the first time. And then they just like say, okay, I listened to it. See you later. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Huh? Later, Hold on a second. Yeah, like, wait a second. <laughs> See ya. What are you doing? <laughs> or, now, the, or like, could you, could you imagine if Pepe went to Haruka's drag race? He was there. She sees him watching. Yeah. And then when they meet up at the end, he's like, no words. I don't have anything to say. You want to go home? Bye. Um, yeah. So that's a fantasy because that's not going to happen now because at first, when I first watched this, the way this transpired to me was that she sat down and in my head, I'm like, okay, they're going to go to this drag race thing. Then she reads the manga and then she's like, oh no. <laughs> oh, she's like, you think that's... Then she's like, <laughs> she's like oh no. And then she goes, um, so Saturday... <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not a good idea because the timing lines up it's like ah, i don't think so and i would have gone to bed believing that if she didn't at least have a secondary date to go to rod motors instead you know mm. so i don't believe that but at first i was like oh god did she like read his manga and then just totally like lose all interest and then cancel everything like i don't put her past that i'm sorry is that mean yeah i mean yeah first of all it was it was bad that she didn't like tell him that she liked the manga or like, like what she liked about it, yada, yada. But then on top of that, so was this a non date? Was she like telling him to come to this drag race, hoping she would, he would forget about it, but she was just trying to be cordial and invite him to something. She kept saying, I hope you go. I hope you go. I'm looking forward to it. Let's do it. Like when they left that initial invitation, it was on like Donkey Kong. That's what mm-hmm. I thought. But now she's like making it. She's like, oh, oh. Like, yeah, totally don't. By the way, I thought about it. I applied some thought to my offer. And after that, now you shouldn't go. Has has anyone gone to one of her drag races yet? I know we've seen the one. No one. And it was like her hanging out with her old man friends. But I don't think there was any housemates there. Yeah. I don't think anyone's like actually gone to see her. It's far out there, too. Maybe she kind of realized that. And she's like, wait, I don't want him to watch me i've never had like someone come along and watch see the thing the thing that makes me feel his pain a little bit more is because i can put myself in his shoes like guys i'm venturing to guess no drag racing girl has ever asked you to go watch her drag racer corvette in japan that's a cool thing to say that's something i would get hyped for i would be very excited Mm -hmm. for and like i said he's grinding away he might have i don't know how many days removed this is from the first invitation but he might have already been putting in work he was clearly planning to go He's pl- clearly planning to put in whatever time and pages he needed to. So he had that day free. So I hope he yeah. didn't get too far ahead, you know, before she dropped that palm on him. But I was hyped for him because that would be a cool thing if someone invited me to that. And now it's not mm. going to happen. Kind of sad. Yeah. Overall, this is just such a bad misstep for Haruka. It's, and, and the panel goes in on her, right? You know, in this very next scene, they say, oh, she's clearly a bad communicator, a little bit immature, doesn't mm-hmm. really think about what the other person would feel with the way she says things, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. And it starts to make me think, you know, maybe the reason she hasn't found love in the house is because of who she is, and which is maybe a little mean to say, but, mm-hmm. you know, if, if all you've been doing is holding out hope for that one guy who really likes Pokemon... But then you invite him and then uninvite him on a date and read his work, but don't say or do anything about it. It's just, I don't know. It's like, how do you even respond to that? Like, uh, even as just a friend, no romantic intentions, yeah. but just, yeah. How, how do you even do that? And Jack? I'm struggling to think about another example where someone invited, then uninvited someone to a date. It may have happened. Put a comment. It, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but it's just not a good look in life. It's not a good look on TV. And a good look on Terrace House. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do want to, the other thing I want to say in this panel moment is just that Yama says Roomba Kiyomi, which I assume is the name of his father. <laughs> that's and that's just, up, that's just good. That, that just stands on its own. It's just being very good. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, he needs to clean the house. <laughs> Clearly, they need him in that house because it's a filth hole. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then we cut to the very last scene of this week's episode where we're on the first floor. It's Haruka chilling at the table and Ruka, I assume, making another broccoli pasta mm-hmm. abomination. Okay, and Kaori comes in, big suitcase in hand. And it's just like, yep, I rented a flat in London. I peace out tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Deuces. Yeet. Yeah. And she can't even yeah, say no goodbye big, no to big a deal, third right, of the guys? house. Right? They're gone and oh. they're not going to see her off. Mm. Sorry, Colin. Yeah. Oh, and Haruka, why why are you making a why why are you crying? Why are you upset? 
Yeah, God. why are you sad? Stop oh, why are you, sad. Why are you being sad for? I don't understand. That was odd to me that that Kauri was just like laughing there when when yeah. Haruka was like cry like really emotional about it. That was weird too. It's like what? I don't, that, it's not what I was expecting out of Kauri. I would have expected more empathy, I guess. I I kind of see it though because they never really they never really had the bond. They they kind of had like this superficial like when. Oh, goodness, what is her name even? Parkour, hardcore parkour. Risako. When Risako was like, you guys are always, like, chatting, and I feel like I can't even, like, come into the bedroom, like... I think... I, I never felt like they were, like, best friends the same way that I felt with, like, Ami and Subasa in OND. See, that's funny, because mm. that's one example where that was sprung on me out of nowhere, and I didn't even know where that one came from. But with... Um, this one here, what's sad, the sad scenario I'm drawing based on the way that Kyrie is reacting is that clearly they did not agree on how close their friendship was. Yes. <laughs> thought Ouch. it was very close and Kyrie clearly yeah. didn't. And that's, yeah, and we've and heard I would even say so. Yeah. And I would have thought it might've been flipped maybe, but it's not. I mean, wow. Like Kyrie don't give a damn really. Yeah. And I, I think that ties back into like what the panel was saying about Haruka being a bad communicator because mm. that it, it didn't really hit me. I couldn't really put my, my thoughts about Haruka together until the, the panel said it out loud about her being just a generally bad communicator. She just comes kind of comes across in some ways as being immature mm. in, in some senses. Like it's, clearly hard for her to like read certain social situations right mm -hmm. and i mean the fact that she, she had that whole myth with with pepe and she her just relationship struggles in the house so far just like her courtship abilities like i don't know she's just had a bad time and i, I think a good portion of it's because of her, her communication <clears throat> her ability to communicate to draw cr contrast here with the latest two departures from terrace house tokyo Shohei leaving all out of the blue does not necessarily shock me. It struck me as a little rude, a little inconsiderate, you know, to the rest of the roommates. But I'm also not shocked. This thing with Calvary, she got a flat in London. She had her bags packed, rolling them out to the living room. What is prompting this incredibly short notice? Like, what? why is that the preferred way to leave the house? Why not mm. tell people? She clearly had to know this before the other two people left. Why, 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 why is this the way to go out, I guess, for Calgary? My hypothesis with this is let's wind the clock back. What is it like two or three episodes ago? That that scene where all the girls were at the pool and Cody just casually says, yeah, I don't think I trust anyone in this house like at all Dude. with any anything. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. We remember way back in part one, which feels like decades ago at this point. Uh, Haruka confided a lot in Kaori, right? Kaori was the mm -hmm. shoulder that she leaned on, mm -hmm. which maybe Haruka misconstrued as, yes, this is a friendship because I can say things to her and she listens. Mm -hmm. But the real thing about friendship is you've also got to be the one listening. You know, you, you can't just keep giving and giving without receiving anything. Because when you do that, yeah, yeah now, now Kaori's just your therapist, not your friend. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, that's fine. There are relationships like that, but I, I'm i not surprised, I guess, that Cowdy isn't as in tears. Because yeah, of, mm. I guess. I mean, mm. when you think about that episode, yeah, at the pool, I can I can see that there, if that is the correlation. Um, Colin, I'm just curious, not to put you on the spot here, but, like, yeah. have you noticed with Cowdy's Instagram, if she's, like, hanging out with any of the old roommates or anything like that? Is it all just oh, her by herself? Um, Has she had anyone over to London? Do you know? Oh, I... Uh... That I don't know. I vaguely remember seeing an Instagram post where Cody was with someone from the house, but that was like that was a while back. So I'm gonna feign ignorance here. I'm I'm really not sure. Okay, well we can check it out later. Oh. But yeah, I, I just know I've seen too. a couple shots of her like traveling. As you, the, I, she did travel to France not that long ago. I remember seeing that one. Mm. She was there mm. for like a Chanel event or something like of that. Of course she was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love just it. Casual. I love it. She is. Yeah, I I want her to live her best life. She's hoity toity. Like, whatever. She's exactly doing. and. I just want to say about Cody too, like now that I think about it, I, I know I was, I, I came out pretty, pretty hot at the beginning of the show talking about like, how could you do this to us just very suddenly? Like we don't care about you. But if you really think about it though, like actually for real, what are the attachments that Cody has to anyone in the house right now? None. 
No. Exactly. Yeah. That's why she's gone. That makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. Like, what's what's keeping you there? I, I guess point? my original question, though, is that why is this the preferred way to go out? Just all of a sudden, boom, when she knew in her head it was going to happen. I had, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you can't do renting a flat in London. I don't think just happens like, oh, I'm going to wake up and do it and now leave. Like, you got to get some yeah, inertia I, yeah, behind and even, that. And even when she had that discussion like three episodes ago, that's what, three weeks ago in real time? Something like that. Right? So it's just, mm. yeah, I'm just wondering why would she go out like this? Why not just say, hey, two days from now <laughs> i'm leaving guys i know you're gonna be out of town i want you to know you know just anything like that it's just like seems very scorched earth i guess mm. yeah she def. i just don't think she cares yeah i think sad. she's just like i'm ready to get the fuck out sad i mean she had her highlights we are the carry defense force and forever shall be yes. but we will need a new moniker and so we want your uh recommendations in the comments and in discord what do we change her name to now we're not the carry defense <laughs> yeah force. really yeah i'm, I'm yeah. still defending her though I in the sense her. that I don't oh, think I, like I don't think that, that it was like I don't I like think that she left because she was like bye guys I don't care or like she didn't like announce it more formally because she was like I don't I don't care what you guys think I think it was more like I don't want to like a tail between the legs kind of retreat where it's like I don't mm. see the point of me being here anymore I don't want people to try to convince me otherwise I I'm just gonna bow out quietly. I mm. have played my part and I've overstayed my welcome. Bye. And don't yeah. even get to say I bye mean, to the other think, two roommates. If you think about it, the fact that she rents at a flat in London is the ultimate power play, right? Because if she had just said, I'm thinking about leaving, how do we be like, oh no, stay. Shohei might come back. But to be able <laughs> to say, no, I have to like live in, like, I'm paying rent there yeah, now. I, I need to be there. the lease. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a much bigger like you have to go now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were you were going and there's no turning. It's back. the leap. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's mm -hmm. turning back. You just owe thousands of dollars, but <laughs> well, 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 there's turning money. back. A lot of money in turning back. Yeah, too much. Yeah, money. in six months. In six months, she allegedly her her lease is up, which might actually be it's like Marchish, March April ish. Mm. Let's go visit there. Cowrie, guys. Let's go to yeah. London. It's close so to America. If you want Ruka, that's right. Thank you. The other oh, dumb thing that's Ruka was so close to earlier. America. Oh, so close. Yeah, you know what? I thought in his head, I could see the wheels spinning. He's like, you know, there's white people there. White people, America. This gotta be close, right? <laughs> so I mean, to America. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like I don't know. It's like just across the pond. Daily has a very scary look on our face right now. What are you gonna say? New. Conspiracy theory. Oh, no. God, dude, we, can we, we need to call the conspiracy board here. theory yep. okay, Hold on, Please. before before you dive into this conspiracy theory, I just want you to know geography is like kind of an absolute thing. Okay, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> no conspiracy theory. Maybe it is close to America. We don't about, know it. No the ice so, wall. No. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my Alex Jones hat on. So here, yeah, here's what you don't know: is climate change is is, is fake. But also tectonic plates are moving and earthquakes and <laughs> uh go ahead, Daly. No. Ruka's fourteen. Ruka's oh. like fourteen, fifteen. That's it. That's We've the been tweet. bamboozled. That's the tweet. That send tweet. <laughs> We've been bamboozled. <laughs> They've been saying like, oh no, he this is an adult man that we're sending you. And his family is complacent, his workplace is complacent in this complicit too Com where <laughs> well, probably both yeah. complacent complacent yeah. i mean anyway, Luke is complacent but they were like okay we're gonna we're, you're gonna be on tv yay and he's like cool i get to skip school and stuff and pretend to be an adult like i don't know because that would honestly be an easier explanation this like tangled web of people Thank that you. are pretending that he's and yes, the tangled Spider-Man web of people uh -huh. pretending that this is an adult man versus like how dumb and weird and I'm sorry, Ruka, like unprepared for the world he is. You know, what it's funny you... too because I remember reading once in my textbooks that Nishino Iri does translate to adultman, so his name is Ruka Adultman. Wow, which is a very it's suspicious. Adultman, Holy shit, guys, <laughs> like. <laughs> Like it's real, it's I, real. I really think it's just as simple for the guy. At first, I'll you know, say, like, "Oh shit, I've only said one stupid thing this week." Come up with something. London, <laughs> he's got a quota. <laughs> English white people. That's America too, right? Like that's what I. That's really I think the thought process there. And anything beyond that is just giving him too much credit, maybe. 
So I'm assuming his parents wa- are watching this. Uh, I hope what not. Are, <laughs> what are they thinking? <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, good God, boy. Can you what imagine? the boy we raised? I don't think his parents are watching. His grandma's <laughs> definitely watching, but I don't think his parents are watching. Wait. Uh, did we? Okay, no conspiracy I theory. No. Oh, boy. <laughs> conspiracy, theory. conspiracy theory number 26 for the second then- dash 3B. <laughs> Well, and then I had deja vu because I'm pretty sure we as a collective group have come up with this conspiracy theory before. Well, what if this is his grandma throwing him into the deep end and it's just like you either learn to swim or you sink and die? Wow. Wait, did his grandma sign him up for this? Or was that? No, was that, you you're was that you die? die. You die. No, he's right. a grandma's boy. Okay, they're never both mind. grandma's boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. But okay. This there. Wow. There was a bevy of conspiracy theories and we want to hear your thoughts, guys. That was quite an episode. A tangled web of conspiracy theories. Real quick, are, do you think we're going to get an official Kauri goodbye next episode, or was this it? Was this it? I no, I think we'll see. Like her put her we'll keys up, walk send away. Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, we'll see her send off next episode. Oh yeah. gosh, yeah, but she's not going to say bye okay. to Joe or uh, Emmy. I liked her a lot. She had an interesting run on Terrace House. It was yes. like very involved with like there was a lot of talk about who she liked. Without anything actually ever really getting close to even happening. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, she was engaged. So, oh, that explains you know. it all. That's what I hear. Okay. To the grapevine. <laughs> uh, Conspiracy theory. But I say, let's wrap up this week's episode. It, it's, it's been a long one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you have any questions, comments, any theories to go on top of our many conspiracy theories from this week's episode, you can email any and all of those things to us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. Uh, and you know, we've been doing the show for a while now. We're what in our 13th, 14th month of doing this. We are close to a pretty huge milestone on YouTube. It's very exciting for us all here at Tadima Studios LLC. We're not an LLC. Um, and just to, you know, just to kind of help us grow a little bit. If you enjoy the work that we do here, if you really do think that we do a fantastic job and you want to see us do more of it, uh, we've actually opened up a buy me a coffee page where you can. You know, if you, if you like what we do, throw us uh, five bucks, you buy us coffee to keep us awake. Because really, we haven't slept since the first episode. We just keep drinking coffee until we just keep making. But we want more, more coffee, which is weird. We but do. Don't think about it too hard. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Give I mean, if caffeine. you enjoy the work we do, the, throwing us some caffeine would help. And because all we want to do is make the best show possible for you and for us. And any bit of your support would be greatly appreciated. Guy, guys, I'm like Fry in that episode of Futurama with all the coffee. Send help, please. <laughs> Send yeah. coffee. Right. Send coffee. But if not that, I mean, feel free to join our Discord. You know, join join our follow us on Twitter and all that stuff. Because it, really, any way that you interface with us is it just means the world to us. You know, uh, we will be back next Tuesday where we're going to talk about episode 20 of Tokyo 2019 2020. The third flower. Weird name. Hmm. I feel like all of them are kind of weird. As right? opposed to the second flower. Right, exactly. Yeah, or the second banana. This has been <laughs> Tadai Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Itakimas. We hope you enjoyed our show. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ding that bell to receive notifications when we publish brand new content. Follow us on social media and check out our brand new Discord server, linked in the description below.